Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where you go over songs that came out this week in EDM, and I give my thoughts and opinions on all the songs that came out then. Uh, as a reminder, there's a Spotify link down below for all the songs in order, make sure you sort by recently added. And uh, yeah, let's hop into it. Uh, there are 24 songs I wanted to talk, out, talk about this week, a pretty slow week, all things considered. Um, a lot of dubstep and a lot of variety in uh, the, the goodness of a track, I'll put it that way. So uh, we got something from every category this week. This week is we're going to start in the trash category songs that I thought were trash. Uh, we just got one and it's David Guetta and One Republic with I Don't Want to Wait. Oh, David Guetta. Uh, rather, <laughs> rather than like covering an old classic song like he's been doing time and time again, uh, David Guetta has now just resorted to just stealing melodies. Um, this is literally the, the Numa Numa melody, the Numa Numa Numa. Yeah, da, 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 it's literally that just with a bland, generic lyricism from One Republic and a production that is flat and borderline non-existent. The whole thing is just sad. Uh, as we move into the bad category, songs that I thought were uh, not great. Just a reminder, these are just my opinions on things. Don't take them as gospel truth. Uh, we've got Riot 10 with I Hate EDM. I don't really understand the appeal of this track. Uh, is it supposed to be for EDM fans as like kind of a, like a gotcha to non-EDM fans? Is it supposed to help non-EDM fans in, enjoy EDM? I, I just... I can't really understand either of those arguments because the song is exactly what it's parodying. It's like repetitive and boring and lacks any real substance. I, I just don't understand where the appeal of this track uh, is, is going for, where it comes from. So, um, yeah, not a big fan. Then we've got Riot and Micah Martin with Death Wish. Uh, the new Death Wish EP is out now by Riot. Uh, and this track is absolutely wild. I will say that. Um, it's got screamo elements. It's got dubstep elements. It's got a key change in there as two. Um, it's really just to throw everything at the wall and hope something sticks kind of track. And uh, I did not think that was great. Um, I, I just mourn the days of, of Dogma Resistance Riot. Um, their music was really, truly unique and interesting. And this just feels like a totally different artist from Dogma Resistance. So I don't know. Speaking of EPs, we've got the Genesis EP by Fairlane, and the track in particular I wanted to highlight was Fairlane and Spaceman Zack with Only the Good Die Young. Uh, yeah, sonically, this track leans way more into pop rock than it does explicit, explicitly EDM, uh, but it's fairly on par for a lot of the melodic stuff nowadays. Um, that being said, I thought this cut from the EP wasn't great. I thought the vocals were quite nasally, as you do get with kind of pop rock here and there. Uh, the mixing was a bit flat, and it just didn't connect with me. So, uh, yeah, I thought this one was not great. I thought it was bad. Then we'll move into the meh category songs I thought were meh. We've got Steve Aoki featuring Kiddo with Drive, uh, just a generic electropop song from Steve Aoki, which is a very, very welcome surprise. Um, I didn't expect or feel anything from this track, and that's all I ever wanted from Steve. Uh, and then we've got Diplo and Riva Star featuring Karina Lomax with Heaven or Not. In another weird twist of fate, this track is just generic deep house with commercial appeal it is far from bad but far from interesting and it's just gonna land in meh somehow diplo and stevie Oki just put out regular songs this week that weren't terrible uh then we got slushy with if you love me now a russian dance track with vocals of the same language with little english uh mixed in there too um yeah it's very much a slushy style of song with uh, processed vocals and the very moving energetic drops but um it was just all very bland to me it just felt a uh, very like oddly safe for slushy i don't know it was just it was a weird track we got Dylan Francis and Shipwreck with Whole Lot of Drugs, a double-sided single uh, of Tech House tracks uh, with this and Over the Edge, uh, being the two singles there. Uh, this track in particular is more of the more of a big room sounding of the two here, and uh, with a strong emphasis on the there are a lot of people doing a lot of drugs right now, which is the theme of this song. And I mean, it's whatever. I didn't hate it. I thought the production actually wasn't too bad for Dylan Francis. Then we've got Draper with Gold, uh, a bright commercial house cut with some neat instrumentation here and there with a bit of like a saxophone. I think there's a little bit of some other brass instrument in there too, but um, overall it felt a little dated of a track. I think this would have slapped in like 2015 with like Galantis's takeoff and their pharmacy album, but other than that, I think nowadays it's uh, it's okay. Then we've got Yo Mass and Wind Awake with From the Sky, a uh, relatively simple house track with an equally simple melody. Um, this track is more of an atmospheric focused one rather than it kind of being like a banger. But uh, I think the lack of change in pacing and melody didn't really help the track out for me all that much. 
Then we moved into the good category, songs that I thought were uh, pretty good. We've got Mazale and Balela with On My Own. Uh, Mazale always has some of the most unique sound design out there, uh, and this is no exception. It's got some bounce and pop to it on the drops, and um, always ends with the drum and bass final movement, as Mazale has been doing as of late. So, And, and I enjoyed this one. Then we've got Spaghetti with Flex, uh, absolute balls to the walls, dubstep, especially on the back half. Uh, the front half is kind of your more or less standard dubstep cut, but uh, the final act is just like a hit after hit after hit of just face melting metallic dubstep sounds. Um, so uh, yeah, one that I thought was actually not too bad. Then we've got Paper Skies and Flow Anastasia with Louder Than Noise from the new Wireframe LP out now from Paper Skies, his debut album. Uh, yeah, this is a genre-bending track for sure with hints of color bass, future bass, and dubstep, and uh, all wrapped in this very like wet and wavy setting that complements the kind of stuttering, stuttering synth melodies that are uh, all so prevalent on this track. So uh, great cut from Paper Skies, and I'm excited to dive into that album in full. Then we've got Abstract with Cash. Uh, this is very much uh, the like modern rendition of Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger um, with the repeating vocals of the one-word vocals just all thrown on top of uh, um, another kind of metallic sounding, but this time a bass house production here. Um, really engaging track that I think hits really well. It's far from as good as Harder, Better, Faster, Stronger, but um, still a neat little homage of sorts. Then we've got Sippy with the Banana Song. Monster Cat's 2024 April Fool's song is here. Uh, and it's very similar to the mega success that was Crab Rave in terms of uh, what they're trying to go for here. It's definitely a meme track. Um, it's definitely a good track as well that they're just hoping hits some sort of algorithm and just go, takes off. Um, I don't think this will as much as Crab Rave took off, um, but I do think it's a good track um, that, uh, yeah, I just... I was surprised with how much I actually enjoyed it. So that is Sippy the Banana Song. Also, I found out before. I knew before anyone else did. Quote me on that. Uh, then we got Effin with Love Potion. A uh, bit of a bouncy dubstep track from Effin with his kind of classic 1900s vocals here. Um, it's not his most daring track to date, but another really solid cut from Effin that uh, you're going to enjoy if you like other Effin stuff. Then we got Kid with Tear Me Down, uh, a subtle yet intricate garage track uh, with little hits of like trap here and there. Uh, it's a bit of a return to an older style of kids uh, and one that I deeply resonate with. Um, I loved Kid from the past, like I want to say 2018 and earlier. I loved Kid stuff, but nowadays it's kind of just meh for me, but uh, this feels like a return to form for me personally. We've got Mad Dubs and Dea featuring Jedwill with Enchantress. Uh, now, this is a full flavor kind of track. Um, glitchy synth runs, dubstep bass lines, hyper pop vocals. It's got a bit of everything going on here. Um, and it's all wrapped in this kind of Disney-esque twinkle melody synth that is all throughout and very prevalent. But um, yeah, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of good going on. I'll say that with this track. So that's that. Then we got Conroe and Harris with Nothing On You. Uh, Conroe's always bounced around a bit of a funk sound, but it's it's always been predominantly in that kind of EDM or electropop sphere, but uh, this one I would say is 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 quite funky, uh, and it's very much at the forefront of the track, unlike any other, or more so than any other track that Conor has done in the past, I think. Um, in fact, the whole song actually reminds me a lot of Cosmo's Midnight, which is a very good thing to be compared to. Um, it's a commercial cut that uh, works really well, I think, and so I enjoyed it, Conor, quite a bit. Then we got more Kismet and Wave Dash with Harness. Uh, yeah, this new track, this new collab works really well. These two sound like they are working in tandem quite well. A realization I had uh, when doing the reaction, which the video is going to come out tomorrow, um, but uh, Wave Dash kind of sounds like a more calm, uh, it's more Kismet, and more Kismet is a more like intricate Wave Dash is kind of the best way to put it. Uh, and this track, I think, worked well. I think it could have used a bit of vocals uh, here and there somewhere, um, but in terms of sound design this is impeccable it, it's quite well and or it's quite good and it sounds uh, really really clean so that's that we've got shallow with uh iwaly which is i will always love you and uh, it's a calming track with uh, spurts of jumpy garage and future based movements um it's a unique structure and i think it really paid off in the track in the in the end there but uh, it reminds me a lot of uh like this uh this genre that my friend and i came up with years and years ago we called the filter bass um it's uh an example would be uh you and me the you and me remix uh flumes you and me remix by disclosure originally by disclosure or ramesses be a play to win on the rocket league compilation um, it just sounds like someone's playing with the high pass, low pass filter the entire time. Like it's just a song. Wah, 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 wah. It's like what it is. And so uh, if you like filter bass, uh, then I think you'll enjoy this one quite a bit. 
Then we've got Beast Boy with Front Seat. The new debut LP from Beast Boy is here with the Wings and Fangs LP. Uh, Beast Boy has been on a tear as of late, uh, and it was time for a debut LP. And uh, yeah, this was right up my alley. I hadn't been a huge lover of Beast Boy in the past, but this is this is pretty great. Um, this track in particular is everything that I love about his stuff. Um, crunchy synth, sporadic beats, and the style of rhythm that I think the general EDM fan can really get behind. So, uh, And this LP is monstrous from what I've heard so far so and then we're moving into the standout category two songs that i thought were pretty uh pretty good cut above the rest we've got cone sound with alter cast uh minimalistic and intense drum and bass track here with lots of intricate sound design and um just a really really nice atmosphere that one expects to hear from cone sound this is just them doing what they do best and finally, we've got Zed's Dead, Flux Pavilion, and Death by Romy with Waves, an absolutely killer collaboration here. All three artists bring their own sound and texture to a track that just gives uh, with its expansive drops and long movements. Um, it's already shot up my year-end list at this point, at least uh, where we are so far in the year, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if this lands uh, on my final, final year-end list for 2024. Um, it's just a great collaboration. I think you get hits of Zed's Dead that we haven't heard in a while. I think we get hits of Flux Pavilion that we have been hearing but not in um, a more expansive track as this one is. And uh, yeah, I just think this is an absolutely stellar track. So uh, let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Botai Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.